Welcome everyone to the Minnesota Inclusive Higher Education Consortium Learning Community. My name is Sally Sexton. Today is the first of three learning community events that MyHEC will offer every month through May. Today's learning objectives are to learn about inclusive higher education, know about tools for preparing and planning for college, identify available sources for paying for college, learn about opportunities to help expand options in Minnesota, and ask questions and give input. Now I will hand it over to Liz, who will describe for you what inclusive higher education looks like. Hi, this is Liz speaking. Thank you, Sally. And hello, everyone. Before delving into what inclusive higher education is, we wanna take a minute to clarify who we are talking about. This slide shows how the federal law defines a student with an intellectual disability. In summary, they are students with both a cognitive impairment and who currently have or have had an IEP. Students with an intellectual disability who wanna continue their education in college face barriers to enrollment including admissions exams and criteria, and support needed, which is beyond disability services. Inclusive higher education removes those barriers. Next slide. Thanks. Today, there are a number of pathways for students with an intellectual disability to take college classes and go to college. As you can see on the slide at the top, they can take college classes during high school and transition years. And on the bottom, they can enroll in inclusive higher education after completing their secondary education. In other words, after 12th grade or transition, whichever is last. This evening, we'll focus on the latter, inclusive higher education after secondary education. Next slide. So I'd like to introduce you to a documentary film by Daniel Habib. The film gives us a glimpse into two colleges Millersville and Temple University, and the students with intellectual disabilities who are going to college. We'll see just a short clip from this film. As you watch it, notice how the students with intellectual disabilities are genuine members of their campus community. And I think um, we might want to pause it for a second because the sound isn't working. Um, Singhi, do you want to check on that? You may just need to have your microphone on and that should be able to help. All right, one goes to her dorm with her roommate. This is your Facebook? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I think I saw your profile on my Thanks. Facebook. You're beautiful in this picture. Thank you. Absolutely stunning. She wears a prom dress. Uh -oh. oh, someone's angry. <laughs> She's in a common room. Hi, Missy. Uh -huh. How are you? Good. Missy sits at her laptop. What are we working on today? Missy Jackson, Millersville student, uh, integrated studies. Oh, 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 oh. Mark Masoner, okay. student, I, educational oh. support coach. I have homework, too. <laughs> When we started this program, I had a professor call me on the phone and said, there is no place at this university for people with intellectual disability. Thomas J. Newville. I said, do you know that a little over a hundred years ago, your peers said there's no place at this university for women or people who are African-American or people who are Latino or people who have physical disabilities. We've been segregating people a long time and it has not worked. Maybe we should try something else. In a lecture hall. You like that clean acoustic guitar sound? It's a thin texture, right? 
Director of Integrated Studies, Jan Bechtel. Integrated Studies is a fully inclusive initiative for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities to come and have a fully inclusive college experience. So that's everything from academic, social, residential, and personal well-being. A man speaks to Missy in an office. The program's been in existence since 2014. We started with one student, and now we have 16. What have you successfully overcome? In another of Missy's classes. Right? Go outside. Bechtel. Integrated study students also work on vocational career exploration and building relationships. So it helps them grow as individuals and also in terms of their career and their future. They're admitted as full-time non-degree seeking students. They receive a university approved certificate. It's a meaningful credential and it's modeled right after our own Millersville University diploma. In another lecture hall. All right, excellent. Okay, what other call to action might there be? Yeah. The developmental upgrades of NFL equipment. Okay, the or the use of it. Professor right. Victor Capici. So let's frame it this way. To mandate the use of more protective equipment in football. I'm, I'm rephrasing it a little bit. Does that make sense? So Integrated study student Curtis Ostrowski nods. Curtis. My aunt texted my mom about this program. And as soon as I got that message, I put my laptop down, rushed to the library, and got everything I needed to apply. Theo Brady. When people say college is not for students with intellectual disability, then you're going to continue to oppress. Adjunct professor, disability studies. We've got to be very intentional about basic civil rights. Everyone needs an opportunity to participate. We need to open doors instead of close doors. That means a little bit more investment of your time as a professor. That's what we do with any student. Missy opens the door. In the deep south, white America oppressed black America. In class. Separate schools. Separate classrooms. She listens with other students. They have those kind of traditions and customs that you think is okay because you see it every day, you got used to it. But all along, it was oppressive. And that's the same thing happened today with disability. She walks down a hall. Because I was like, I did get my homework. Mine. She reads a note on a door. Oh, uh, I just like, I'm thinking, I'm going to make a uh, she sits in a chair nearby. Uh, I'm not coming back to eat high. I took a good cause. I can go and get homework and have fun. I go at the knee and kick you. Backtown. Missy has, in her time here so far, developed a great deal in her self-advocacy. When she first came, she was really reluctant to talk. There were some students on campus that would call her names and things, and I, I think that made her go more inward. Professor Ona Karianga. Now, Missy has a bit of challenges speaking, but that should not detract from the fact that she has a mind of her own. She can try as difficult as it is to express herself. There's nothing more important than bringing a perspective of the world based of the education in society. Thank you, Singhi. Um, okay, next slide. What is inclusive higher education? It looks the same as it does for other students. Did you notice this in the film? So when you're looking for an inclusive college, these are the things that you can look for and expect. Academic access and inclusive instruction, person-centered planning, career development, paid internships and employment, campus engagement, students participating in clubs and activities, self-determination, residential campus living if it's available to other students, peer mentors and supports, students earn a certificate or non-degree credential. 
Inclusive higher education allows for the same rights, privileges, experiences, benefits, and outcomes as a typical enrolled student by removing barriers. It does not create something new, segregated, or separate. Some things are just structured differently for student success. It provides a different admissions process, for example, than the one used by degree-seeking students. Students will not need SAT or ACT scores. They'll need documentation of their disability and support needs. The process usually includes an interview. Classes are usually audited and it provides peer mentors and wraparound support beyond what is provided by disability services. So check the website of the colleges you're interested in to learn more about their specific requirements. Next slide. So what is the benefit of inclusive higher education? Student outcomes. Research shows that students achieve better adult outcomes than students that do not go to college. They're more than twice as likely to be employed. They earn about $400 more per month than peers who did not attend college. They're more independent. They have better physical health and healthier relationships, and they rely less on government supports. It opens doors to earning a meaningful credential, pursuing a career of choice, earning a competitive wage, and living a fulfilling life. Next slide. Here are two images showing groups of college students. One large group of about 30 students at a student leadership conference sitting and standing on steps posing for a picture, and one small group of four students in a cafe booth smiling. Next, we'll look at how students can plan and prepare for college. Next slide. And how they do that is we've listed some examples here. Here's a start. Have higher expectations of students from family and school, including teachers, case managers, and administration. Expand IEP goals to include post-secondary aspirations and needed skills for college. Connect and engage with a voc rehab counselor. Seek out paid summer jobs and internships. Advocate for opportunities at school. Maybe uh, consider being a teaching assistant. What, notice what are typical students doing. And also advocate for opportunities in the community. Maybe a community theater program. Empower your student to manage their schedule with their cell phone, calendar, and use reminders. Have your child make their own appointments for a dentist, doctor, haircut. These strategies came from specific resources that we'll be sharing with you, including tips to help prepare students for college, IEP goals, and 20 powerful strategies to prepare for college. Next slide. And then for college visits and tours, it's so important. The college search process is critical in matching students' interests and talents with the school's size, approach, and offerings. The key is finding a good fit like for any student. Here are some ways to start. Conduct college searches and attend college fairs. Visit colleges, join tours from high school, or go on your own in person or virtual. Usually there's specific dates offered for open houses or info sessions. Talk to existing college students and their parents. This could be during visits or request this through the admissions office. Participate in summer pre-college offerings attend admitted student overnight, go to student leadership conferences and student advocate groups. Later, we'll be sharing specific resources for students and family, including Think College Student Corner and how to conduct a college search. Next slide. On this slide, we see images of a college fair and a pre-college summer experience. Our photo or excuse me, one photo shows a parent and daughter talking to a college representative from the University of Iowa. And the other photo shows a classroom with seated students listening to a presentation. So after planning and preparing, how do you pay for college? I will now hand it over to Mary who will talk about some of the options. Next slide and there, check that box. I'll, let me start over. Hello, this is Mary speaking. Thank you, Liz.
The gateway to college was opened in 2008 when Congress reauthorized the Higher Education Opportunity Act. The legislation established a pathway for students with intellectual disabilities and set minimum standards for college initiatives. Colleges and universities are able to apply for the Comprehensive Transition and Post-Secondary Program designation from the U.S. Department of Education. This designation is key for students. Students with an intellectual disability who enroll at a college or university with a CTP designation are eligible to apply for federal financial aid. As any college student, students with an intellectual disability and their families have questions about how to pay for college. With the next few slides, I'll talk about some of the different ways a student with an intellectual disability is able to pay for college. Applying for financial aid is the same for a student with an intellectual disability as any other college student. They will have to complete the free application for federal student aid for each year of college. In order to be eligible for financial aid, a student with an intellectual disability has to attend a college with a comprehensive and transition post-secondary program designation. <clears throat> Excuse me, com and complete the FASA application every year. <clears throat> For federal financial aid, students with an intellectual disability are eligible and considered for federal Pell Grants, Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grants, and Work Study. <clears throat> when a Minnesota student completes the FASA and attends a Minnesota college with the CTP designation, they are automatically considered for Minnesota grants and scholarships. There are a number of state grants and scholarships that a student may be eligible for, most of the state grants and scholarships are needs-based financial aid. Student, or excuse me, um, one state grant is specific for Minnesota students with an intellectual disability who attend a college or university with the CTP de designation. The Office of Higher Education has more detailed information about the various state grants and scholarships on their website. Most universities and colleges will automatically consider a student for institutional aid upon receipt of the student's FASA application and admissions. It is best to inquire about available scholarships with the specific college or university that you are applying to. Many colleges offer institutional aid to students. Individuals with a disability may have disability support funding through a waiver vocational rehabilitation services, or social security. If a student is eligible and has a waiver or vocational rehabilitation services, their plans may include funding for college-related expenses. Any funding decision is based on the student's individual circumstances, eligibility, and is decided with their county case manager and vocational rehabilitation counselor. Waiver funding includes the Medicaid home and community-based services. If eligible and approved in, approved in the individual support plan, consumer directed community supports and consumer support grants may include funding for post-secondary education related expenses. These funds could potentially be used for a variety of student support needs while in college. Each Minnesota school district has vocational rehabilitation counselors who work directly with the students while they are still in high school. If college classes or attending college as part of the student's IEP goals and transition plan, then it is important to include the vocational rehabilitation counselor in the planning. If a student is eligible and the course of study is directly related to the student's job goal, then vocational rehabilitation may provide funding for tuition and fees, books and supplies, assistive technology, transportation, and other expenses. Again, any funding decision through a waiver or vocational rehabilitation is based on the student's individual eligibility, circumstances, and approved plans. Individuals who have a disability or medical condition that prevent them from working may be eligible for social security benefits. Social security benefits are, the, are for basic needs that include food, shelter, healthcare, and other living expenses. So it is possible to use funding from Social Security to pay for basic needs while attending college. Just like 
any college student, a student with an intellectual disability may pursue private scholarships or fund their college expenses through various savings or family contributions. There are scholarship opportunities that are available to students with an intellectual disability. Students and their families will need to research and identify private scholarships the student is eligible to apply for. Individuals with a disability have a couple of savings and investment account options that they could use for college expenses as well, namely uh, ABLE accounts and special needs trusts. An ABLE account is a tax advantage savings and investment account for individuals with disabilities. There are specific eligibility requirements that an individual with a disability has to meet in order to open and use an ABLE account. We encourage you to learn about the ABLE account and determine if it is an option for you. If a student has a special needs trust, they may use the trust assets to pay for educational expenses. Finally, students or their families may pay all or a portion of the college expenses from savings, investments, or loans. While a student is not eligible for a student loan, a parent may decide to borrow to help pay for college. Families may also want to learn about and consider 529 college savings accounts. Depending on what funding sources a student is considering, it is important to seek financial advice and clearly understand how any family contribution or student financial aid and assets may impact funding eligibility, especially if the student has waiver funding, vocational rehabilitation services, or social security benefits. Currently, there are four Minnesota institutions of higher education that offer enrollment to students with an intellectual disability. Each of the colleges are shown on this image of the Minnesota state map, along with the city that college is located in. Three of the colleges have the CTP designation from the United States Department of Education. They include Bethel, Central Lakes, and Ridgewater. So why are we advocating to expand Minnesota college options for students with an intellectual disability? Well, we know that post-secondary education positively impacts adult outcomes, resulting in higher rates of employment and improved earnings, regardless of disability status. Minnesotans with an intellectual disability need access to post-secondary education as a pathway to employment in a career following their strengths and interests and living the life of their choice. We also know that less than 3% of Minnesota students with an intellectual disability have access to post-secondary education in Minnesota. There are approximately 1,000 students with an intellectual disability completing 12th grade annually. That means there are at least 5,000 college-age Minnesotans with an intellectual disability. They need access to pursue post-secondary education and more college choices to find their best fit college. They need to be able to consider proximity to home, academic interests, the certificate or degrees offered, campus housing options, and cost, among other factors that are important to them when they are deciding to go to college. At MyHEC, we are committed to providing resources and tools for Minnesota colleges and universities to expand inclusive higher education options for students with an intellectual disability. We have brought together key stakeholders as a catalyst to create a pathway to post-secondary education options in Minnesota. It is essential to seek out and support Minnesota colleges and universities that are interested in inclusive higher education. Two of the main barriers that university faculty and staff encounter are the lack of experience and expertise and initial funding requirements. MIHEC, in partnership with Think College, is establishing the technical assistance resources for Minnesota colleges and universities. All of our efforts will fall short unless we address the funding barriers for Minnesota institutions of higher education. MIHEC is advising public policy advocates and policymakers to address the financial barriers. We have, have, we have helped draft proposed legislation that will be introduced this session. The proposed legislation establishes a Minnesota Inclusive Higher Education Technical Assistance Center and competitive grant funding for Minnesota institutions of higher education. Another critical step is raising awareness. There are many students, families, educators, and other key stakeholders who are not aware that college is an option. It is imperative 
to help spread the word, provide information, and support students who want to continue learning through post-secondary education. Tonight's event is the start of our outreach, and we hope that we have sparked your interest not only to learn about college options, but to help spread the word. As I finish up our portion of tonight's event, we know that, you, that we have not covered everything about college. We encourage you to learn more about inclusive higher education, college options, and share with your guidance counselors, teachers, and family members. Will college help you with your goals and career path while building on your strengths and interests? If so, then include college as part of your pathway and plan for your future. It is possible. While in Minnesota, we have limited college options, it will take time and many voices to expand the pathway to college for students with an intellectual disability. One way that you may help build positive momentum is to join us and advocate. There are a number of ways to help and Julia from the Ark of Minnesota is here tonight to introduce herself and share some ideas of how to get involved. Julia. Hi, this is Julia. Thank you, Mary. I wanted to talk to you today about how to get involved if you're interested. Uh, first, we have Disability Advocacy Day coming up a week from today, which is February 22nd from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. It is all virtual this year, and we will be making posters and sharing them on social media for legislators to see. We will be having a virtual rally. Uh, the governor and lieutenant governor are expected to come and speak. We will also have legislators and policy experts share about disability-related bills. There will also be a lunch and learn where we will discuss broader topics related to disability. And we need you though to register um, online ahead of time. So we share those links in the chat. And we also have a Facebook event link for you to review. Um, that's in the chat as well. We also have what's called the Capital Connector. That's the ARC Minnesota uh, Legislative Newsletter. It includes action alerts, Minnesota specific news, as well as federal and some relevant resources and news. Um, we will share the link for that for you to sign up in the chat as well. And you can also contact your state se uh, senators and representatives. We'll be following up with an email on our inclusive higher education bill once we have a bill number for you to share with your legislator. We will also include a template for outreach for your legislators so uh, to make it easier for you. If you have any questions, you can email me at the email on the slide um, and let me know if you have any questions and thank you for being here tonight. Thanks, Mary. Okay, next slide. This is Sally. Thank you so much for coming, Julia. I, we just appreciate you being here and for everybody to see your face. Um, and we have a couple pictures here um, to share some images of advocacy happening at the Capitol. Um, this isn't this year, this is prior years, but the first photo is Mary and her daughter and uh, Jean with a legislator at a committee hearing at the state Capitol. And the second photo, I know it's a little blurry, um, is Michael Grace, an aspiring male college student wearing a tie, standing in with Patricia, Senator Patricia Torres Ray, myself and Liz, and we're holding a sign that says, we need more post-secondary options in Minnesota. But as Ju Julia and Mary described, there's something everybody can do to help expand options in Minnesota. You do not have to go to the Capitol, but you can use your voice at your school, in IEP meetings, at the college where you might work or your agency or organization you work for to help raise awareness and raise the expectations for all learners. Next slide. Um, so we're getting towards the end of our, just our presentation time because we really wanna save a majority of the time just to have conversation and answer questions and help people get to know um, more about what my heck um, is doing in our state. So before we wrap up, we're gonna post a short poll um, and then, uh, yep, yeah, thanks thing he already posted that for us. Uh, and just a reminder, the resources that we talked about today, a recording of the presentation, slides and an accessible PDF will be sent to you and you will be it will be available on our website also. 
and I'll share that link to our website. Uh, yeah, after we're done with the poll here, we will visit the website and then we will open it up to questions and discussions until 7.15. If you have to leave before we finish our discussion, I just really wanna thank you for coming. Um, we just showed you the tip of the iceberg about inclusive higher education, um, but we wanted to show you that tip of the iceberg so that we can go deeper later. Uh, but if you have to leave, we look forward to hearing from you and seeing you in the future.